when I came to Immaculate Conception, I had a lot of parents coming with special needs kids who wanted a Catholic education for their children, but we didn't have a program for them, so I had to turn them away. I had to deny them a right to a Catholic education because we didn't have teachers in place or a program that would service their needs. Why should that prevent them from learning about God in a Catholic environment? When you deal with any kind of special needs, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it just doesn't matter the severity of the diagnosis. Everything's a little bit different. No experience is the same. But I think especially if you have a child with special needs, um, I know a lot of other parents are fighting, constantly having to fight the school district to get the right services that they need for their child with special needs. He's a joy. He's my child. I'm proud of him regardless. If he was artistic or general child, he's regular to me. My son Rohan, he is six and just started first grade. Jameis is 11 years old. Isaiah is 10 years old. And he has autism spectrum disorder. Asperger's. Severe ADHD. We also deal with some anxiety. Sensory processing disorder. He is severe ADHD, which is an understatement. He's an artistic kid. Isaiah, what's today? Today is Thursday. Thursday, that means it is October the what? What? That's right. We actually didn't get this diagnosis until very late, so education in general has been a struggle. Last year he was in kindergarten in the school district and it didn't go so well. I didn't feel it was the right setting for him. He was put in a mainstream class with 20 plus other kids. It wasn't good. He was in the class with a lot of behaviors. Pretty much from the first day he was being bullied. He simply cannot pay attention in a class full of 20 other kids. So it was holding him back from what he could really do. The breaking point, I guess they had been playing volleyball in PE and um, he didn't do it right. And one of the older boys followed him into the locker room and choked him, slammed up against the locker and said, I'm gonna kill you. Jameis wasn't scared. He honestly just didn't understand. How can anyone learn in an environment that they don't feel safe? It's not possible. In Augusta, this is the, actually the only special ed private school in Augusta. And the city as a whole is very limited in terms of special ed. There's really like public school, or I know some people do homeschool for special ed too. One of our biggest fears was not being able to afford it. We're at the inclusion program and that's a lot of money. A lot of people claim that they service or they have a special education program in their school. But really what their program, they will only accept into their programs very, very mildly disabled children. Ones that may need a little catch up in reading or a little bit of a catch up in math. But our program is different in the fact that we take severely disabled children. We have severely autistic children here at our school. We have children who never spoke before they came to our school. We were looking at some of these schools and they may have good programs, but there's no way we could afford it. We're just kind of limited here. Augusta as a city and community is behind the times in its approach to education in general. And in the development and education of special needs children, it is outright negligent. When we visited the Richmond County Public School that was available to us, it was like walking into holding cells for imprisoned children. It just makes a big difference to feel included, like you're not, you know, a special case. Safe, happy, successful. Those are our goals. He was not safe, he was not happy, and he was not successful at the other school the number one leading lawsuits for public school systems is special education. And so when people hear that, you know, they're, they're looking at is this going to be something that's really going to work or is this going to be something that becomes a big headache? Everything that was thrown at us, we were able to answer with research and proved programs. And it's hard to not get on board when, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing left in the dark. I worked hard, Mrs. DeRoller worked hard, our pastor worked hard, the staff worked hard to really do a lot of research and come together and put together a proposal for our bishop. And here we are um, starting, you know, the first 
fully inclusive special education program at any school in our diocese, but also we're the only diocesan Catholic school in the state of Georgia to have a program that's as inclusive as ours is. When I heard they were offering a special needs program, I thought it would be awesome to put him in a private school setting. I felt he would get more than what he was getting in the public school. When we heard that the special ed program was starting at Immaculate Conception, we decided to send him here for first grade. And so far we've been very happy with it. I would spoke to Ms. Rowland a couple of times on the phone. She had made an appointment for the next day for Jameis to come in and do his testing, and then he was here the next week. Sometimes God leaves you breadcrumbs on, you know, the right path. He handed me the whole freaking loaf with this school. <laughs>